with uh, David Chan here on topic 1.2, Uncertainties and Errors. We're looking at a, a data analysis question in an unfamiliar scenario. Uh, we have a question where we're trying to do uh, a prep on the fundamental frequency of the vibration of a string in a standing wave. Uh, what we have here is uh, a block uh, that vibrates up and down, causing uh, a wave to form in the string. We'll put different masses on this hanging mass to vary the tension on the string. And we're going to look at the relationship between the velocity of the wave and the uh, tension on this string. Um, now, in order to calculate the speed of the wave, uh, we use this formula, uh, knowing the frequency that we set the vibration to and the length of the string. Uh, we've varied the tension and found the fundamental frequency, uh, turned that into velocity, and the results are here. So for different tensions on the string, we get different velocities of the wave in the string. We're told that the uncertainty in velocity is plus or minus five meters per second, and the uncertainty in, in tension is negligible. The first thing we need to do is draw error bars on the first and last points to show the uncertainty for v. Uh, we're told that it's plus or minus 5 meters per second, so we just need to add plus or minus 5 meters per second to each one of these points. Taking a look at the scale, we see that uh, the major divisions go, say, 10 to 20 uh, meters per second, so that means that each division is going to be uh, 2 meters per second. So 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So if I want to go up 5, or down 5, I need to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And down 5 would be down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This puts me at a spot right between the minor divisions, and the mark scheme is going to be that specific. You need to make sure that your error bars show up halfway between the minor divisions. Uh, for the last data point, it's going to be exactly the same, except that note that this data point is already halfway between two minor data points. So if we want to go up five, it's up one, two, three, four, five, which puts us back on a minor division, and down five, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, being able to read and mark to half a division on the scale is expected. Uh, the next part says uh, the original hypothesis is that the speed is directly proportional to the tension. Explain why the data does not supports this hypothesis, and it, and it doesn't. If we take a look at this data, if we try to draw a straight line through the data, uh, we need a straight line for proportionality. Uh, it doesn't go through the origin. Uh, and in fact, if we really kind of stretch it, twist the line a little bit so it just barely fits through all the error bars, it still doesn't quite make it through the origin. There's a little difference there. Uh, so the evidence that this is not proportional is uh, proportionality requires uh, a straight line that goes through the origin, and in this case, there is no straight line that passes through the error bars and goes through the origin. So that would be the two marks. We need straight line and through the origin. Uh, in the next part, we learn that uh, we're given up on the idea of a proportional relationship, and we're going to suggest that maybe v is proportional to the square root of tension, velocity is proportional to the square root of tension, with some proportionality constant k. Um, we're going to test this idea by re-graphing the data. Uh, this time, we've graphed v squared on t. And according to the new theory, that should produce a straight line. The new theory is that v equals k times root t. If I square both sides, I get v squared equals k squared times t. Uh, and if I treat this as a, a linear equation, y equals mx plus c, then uh, if I plot v squared on my y-axis and t on my x-axis, then I should get a straight line with a constant slope and no uh, y-intercept, or an, a y-intercept that goes through the origin. Uh, and that appears to be what we have. We have a straight line, constant slope, and it goes through the origin.
Um, okay, so the best fit line that they've drawn for us uh, takes into account the uncertainty for each data point. Uh, the uncertainty for v squared for t equals 3.5 newtons, so that would be this data point, is shown, uh, and we have an error bar for it. Uh, we want to state the value for the uncertainty for v squared for this data point. So we want to read the error bar off the graph. Uh, taking a look at our scale again, we see that now the minor scale is 0.5. So 2.0, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. .2 .2 so reading that, we read 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So the error bar is plus or minus 0 0.5. But remember to always check the scale and the units. So that's 0 0.5 times 10 to the third meter squared per second squared. Okay, the next part says that uh, at tension is uh, one newton, the speed is 27 plus or minus five meters per second. We wanna calculate the uncertainty of v squared, velocity squared. So they gave us the value for the velocity and the uncertainty for the velocity. They want us to propagate through the error to the calculation for v squared. Um, so propagation of uncertainty for values that you multiply, uh, so squaring is multiplying v times v, uh, is that you add the percent uncertainty. So if I want to know what the percent uncertainty, or sorry, if I want to know uh, the uncertainty in v squared, what I can say is that the fractional uncertainty in v squared, that's the uncertainty in v squared divided by v squared, is the uncertainty in V plus the uncertainty in V, or the fractional uncertainty in V plus the fractional uncertainty in V. So when you multiply V times V, you add the fractional uncertainties for each of those two Vs for a total of twice the fractional uncertainty in V. Uh, so what I wanna do is I wanna solve this for the absolute uncertainty in V squared. I'll do that by multiplying across by V squared and I'll get uh, two times the fractional uncertainty in V times V squared. And uh, you'll notice in this case that I have V squared and then divided by V. So that just simplifies to two times the un absolute uncertainty in V times V. Uh, and I know all those things. So that's two times the uncertainty in V, five meters per second, times the value of v, 27 meters per second. Uh, so you'll punch that into your calculator and you'll get 270. Uh, now this is the absolute uncertainty in v squared, so that's 270 meters squared per second squared. Okay, last question. We want to use the graph to determine the value for the constant k with its uncertainty. And you'll notice I changed the question here, so I've made it a little bit harder. Uh, now we have to go back to the graph and find the uncertainty, uh, find the value for k with uncertainty. So to find the value for k, we need to go back to this linearization we did, uh, where we predicted that the slope of the graph is going to be equal to k squared. So the slope is k squared, which means that k, we can predict, will be the square root of the slope. So to get a value for k, we just need to look at the slope of the graph uh, and take the square root. Um, so looking at this graph, uh, what we want to do is pick two points on the graph that are as far apart as possible or reasonably far apart. Rule of thumb is uh, you need to be using at least twice, or you need to be using at least half of the graph. So picking two points next to each other is not a good idea. We want to pick them far apart. One convenient point looks like the origin. That's nice and easy to read. And uh, to be honest, the last point's pretty easy to read, too, so we'll, we'll just go for the best choice here, as far apart as possible. This point reads to me as if it is uh, 4, comma, 2.5 and a half times 10 to the third, because remember that scale over here. So if I want the slope for k, I'll just use that and the origin. So k 
is then the square root of rise over run 2.55 times 10 to the third take 0 over run 4 take 0 uh, you do that on your calculator and you get 25 just using the three figures um, the units for k are a little bit unusual um, going back to the original equation up here if we solve this for k we get v on root t, velocity on the square root of tension. Velocity has units of meters per second. And tension has units of newtons, but we have the square root of it, and we're dividing by it. So that's per newton to the one-half. So the units are meters per second per newton to the one-half, which sounds like awful units. And we could simplify it by converting newtons into kilogram meters per second, but it's fine the way it is. That, that's, that's a correct unit. Uh, meter per second per newton to the one half. Okay, so we got k. That's what the question asked for originally. Um, and I'll just point out in the mark scheme that uh, they did actually require that unit for the final mark in the question. Uh, or you could have simplified it, either way. Uh, but we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to find the uncertainty for k by looking at the maximum value for k and the minimum value for k by drawing the maximum slope. We can do that because we already found the uncertainty for uh, velocity squared when tension is 1. We did that in part uh, C2. Uh, the uncertainty is 270 meters squared per second squared, or on this scale, that would be 0.27 times 10 to the third meters squared per second squared. So that's up 1, 2, point 0.7, whoop, and down 1, 2, point 0.7. And now we have two error bars that we can uh, attempt to draw a straight line through. Uh, you're going to need to get out your straight edge and draw a straight line as best as you can through the corners of these error bars. It's going to take me a while on the computer, so I'm just going to pause, and it's going to magically appear. Whew. Okay, I'm pretty happy with those. Uh, they're straight lines. They go through the corners of the error bars, more or less. It looks like I missed this one a little bit. You're going to have to do better on pen and paper. Um, but now what we can do is we can read these lines to get their slopes, and that's going to give us a maximum value for k and a minimum value for k. Uh, so we'll take the max. Uh, this point here looks to be about, uh, well, it should go through the top of the error bar, so it should go through right there. We'll take that as uh, 2.6 times 10 to the third and 3.5. Uh, as well as this point, which looks like 0 0.5 and 0. We'll pick two points here as well on the on the lower slope. That's going to be 0 and 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and a half. 0 0.75 times 10 to the third. And yeah, we, we ought to have gone through that point. So we'll take uh, 3.5 and 1.6 times 10 to the third. Okay, we're going to get the maximum value for k from the maximum value for the slope. So we'll come down here and solve for k max. That's going to be the square root of the maximum slope. So that's going to be 2.65 times 10 to the third, take 0, divided by 3.5, take 0 0.5. That works out to 29 min comes from the minimum value for the slope. That's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the third. Take uh, 0 0.75 times 10 to the third divided by 3.5. Take 0. That works out to 16. Finally, to get the uncertainty for k, we just do max minus min over 2. That works out to 6.5 but you always round uncertainties up to one significant figure. That's 7, making k 25 plus or minus 7 meter per second per newton to the one half.